So I'll say good morning to everybody and welcome to this uh, this morning's webinar. It's all about addressable TV advertising and specifically ad smart from Sky and harnessing the power of TV advertising. And um, I'm Francesca De Lacey and I'm managing director of the JMS Group and we're a full service production agency based in Norwich. I'm sure many of you um, attending will, will know who we are, but I will be starting off with um, a little bit about JMS, where we came from and why we're very enthusiastic about TV advertising. We're then going to move on to our keynote speaker, David Sanderson, who is director of AdSmart from Sky, and he's going to be introducing us to the platform and obviously available for any questions at the end as well. And then after David, uh, Tom's going to be finishing up with, um, all right, I should introduce you, probably senior editor of JMS Group, Tom Vaughan Mountford, is going to be telling us all about the commercial production process, so how we make your TV commercial, which is obviously a, a, an important component of a TV advertising campaign. And then we'll be finishing up with a Q&A session and um, we'll also be joined by our panellist, Andy Grant, who is sales manager for East of England at AdSmart. And he'll be answering any questions about campaigns as well. So um, to start with, I think we've just got a short intro video, haven't we, Tom? Um, we have indeed. A, a show reel to start us off to give you a bit of a taste uh, for the kind of commercials that air on AdSmart and the kind of campaigns we do. favorite brands sale now on everything need a loan let yourself grow what's the secret to the finest fish and chips solar panels could earn you thousands of pounds you want your money to work for you i'll make it work for you they lend between one thousand and ten thousand pounds Great, we're going to just start with my brief presentation about JMS. And the first thing I wanted to talk about very briefly, because I know David's going to talk about some stats side of things, but um, I wanted to kind of bust the myth about TV being a shrinking uh, platform for advertisers and that everyone's kind of going off on digital or, or other forms of advertising. Actually, in 2020, all forms of TV saw growth. Um, these are figures direct from Thinkbox, um, who do a study on TV. Um, but these are just some, some highlight things just to kind of hopefully bust some myths. Uh, every form of broadcaster TV, whether that's live, on demand, playback, grew by 5% year on year, which equates to an extra 10 minutes of viewing per person per day. Um, and broadcaster TV continues to still be the largest single portion of video viewing, including the age group that a lot of people think are turning away, which is the 16 to 34. So I just wanted to sort of start by saying TV really is something to strongly consider to be part of your marketing mix. And I think those stats from the very last year um, help back that up really. But on to a bit more about JMS itself. JMS stands for John Mountford Studios. And um, John Mountford was our founder, along with Carl Goss, in 1983. So we're nearly 40 years old. And um, we were launched to produce radio commercials, uh, sort of for the burgeoning independent radio, uh, local radio sector. So numerous radio stations across the country. We went out to them and said, instead of doing it in-house, use us as your independent service. And from that, really, we had daily very high volume production for nations radio stations nationwide and we end up becoming one of the the leading commercial producers in the UK and we're still very big on radio now but we did then move into TV quite quickly we started initially with corporate video production and we actually worked with companies such as SodaStream, Lotus Cars as our first clients back in the 80s and then we we then dipped our toe into TV advertising because we could see that's where the, the tide was turning and then we progressed to creating really major national campaigns um, from uh, the early 2000s. 
Uh, and then we were very proud uh, to be recommended by Sky for the AdSmart platform when it launched. Um, uh, we became a produ producer for them in, in 2015. So we've been working with them for six years now. And so just some ideas of how old some of the commercials are, but it's just sort of putting in the numbers there. There's far more than 100,000 radio and television spots that we've created in, in our 40 years of production. So there really is very little that we haven't done in our almost four decades and, and, and very few sectors that we haven't covered. And so our experience with the sectors, I mean, there's definitely some repeat clients um, where TV is a particularly powerful channel. Um, uh, travel operators, so tourism and leisure is definitely one of them. Um, cars, car dealerships, home improvements, uh, a lot of direct to consumer brands as well. Um, high street retailers, financial services. Um, we've got clients like Tax Assist that use the platform. Price comparison sites and obviously also toys and baby products. We've done stuff in the children's sector as well, which you would have seen from our, our show reel. This is just a list of some of the clients that, that, that use us, uh, not all for AdSmart, although many AdSmart clients are on there. I can see straight away you've got uh, H&T, Gasway, Taxis Accountants, uh, Renault, all, all very big AdSmart users. Uh, and so you can see some big names that use TV and, and work with us. So we're hopefully a, a pretty trusted partner on the production side of things. And then finally, I just wanted to touch on our team, really, uh, because they are what makes JMS. We're, we are an agency, but we do the vast, vast majority of everything in-house. So the whole team, when you come to us, you will be dealing with one of these team members. So you've got the, the account managers and, and I handle things as well. So there's a very personal service. We don't sort of bump it out to anyone else. You've got the, the team on screen is, is the bulk of the team that you'll be dealing with and who would make your commercial. So you, you're really in solid hands that way. And then I think I'm going to pass the baton to David Sanderson, who's going to talk to you about AdSmart specifically. Francesca, thanks very much for that. And I, and I should say to, uh, uh, as well as saying welcome to everyone who's attending, to point out that um, we work with hundreds of production companies across the UK. But I can honestly say, and I'm not just saying it because we're their guests today, that um, JMS are probably well, almost certainly amongst the most prolific and most professional of all of the production companies we work with across the country. And the, the volume of brands they, they've produced ads for is probably superior to anybody else we work with. So we, we, we really love working with them and they do a great job for an awful lot of clients. So I wanted to give you a brief introduction to AdSmart from Sky. Uh, I was going to just sort of start to sort of set the scene uh, a bit more broadly. And there's three things I hope you're going to take from the next 15 minutes or so. One is that things are really quite exciting in the world of TV, and I'm going to expand on the point that Francesca made. Two is that Sky is in a pretty good place. Um, and three is that addressable TV in the form of AdSmart could be the thing that your business has been missing from its marketing mix that could really make a positive difference. And we'll explore that in a moment. So just as the first bit of the scene setting is to talk about a massive corporate deal that took place just over two years ago. Um, and you'll think, why am I talking about this? But hopefully it'll become obvious. Sky was acquired for 27 billion pounds by Comcast NBCU um, in late 2018. And that was that's important for two reasons. One is it's a massive vote of confidence in commercial television in Europe, let alone in the UK. And um, there were lots of great reasons why they wanted to buy Sky. But one of them was that we happen to have the world's most advanced addressable TV platform. And uh, I'm, that's that I'm going to explore in a bit more detail in a sec. So that's a good thing. Um, and that's What's interesting about uh, Sky and uh, Comcast before they came together is they both shared uh, common beliefs and values around uh, brand safety and and um, the, the the importance of delivering content via whatever means customers wish and uh, delivering engagement that is of huge value to our advertising clients. And that now means that we're, we're part of a major global player in world-class content across uh, five key pillars of content of news, sport, entertainment, uh, drama, and, and documentaries. We've got a, a wealth of trusted broadcast brands, and we produce amazing award-winning content. And the group that we're part of has, I think, 600 million viewers across the globe, uh, 55 million paying subscribers um, in Europe and the U.S., uh, and a program budget of $27 billion a year. Uh, I think Netflix's global program budget is something like $9 billion. So it's, it's a huge organization and, and really exciting to be part of. 
yeah, this is our point about having this sort of common belief of of uh, targeting across uh, all platforms. And from an addressable advertising perspective, that means linear TV, which is still, as you'll see in a minute, the dominant form, uh, are on demand, uh, as referred to as VOD services, video on demand services, and various digital assets, uh, wholly owned assets like Sky News and Sky Sports, um, and Premier League clips on YouTube and, and so on and so forth. This is the point uh, in a bit more detail that Francesca made about uh, in the last 10 years, uh, TV has um, had a, a, a pretty good run of things. Viewing has changed, not surprisingly, uh, with the arrival of subscription um, VOD services like Netflix and, and Amazon Prime, uh, the growth of broadcaster uh, VOD services, uh, our own ITV Channel 4s and, and the BBCs, uh, and people using um, set-top boxes to record and watch content when they wish. But you'll see, still see from this, and this is data up to 2019, that shows that live TV is still the vast majority of the way, way the average person in the UK chooses to view, well over two hours of, of live TV a day, as opposed to, um, uh, we look at some broadcast of VOD at about sort of 15 minutes or so. Um, on average, and it is important to, to rely on the sort of average stats rather than your own personal experience that may well differ from this. Uh, as, as Francesca said, in 2020, we've seen a significant uptick in all viewing across in all forms uh, as the nation has fallen back in love with TV. And of course, you know, lockdown has meant that people have spent much more time in. Um, and that's been a, been a good thing. What we've also learned on the next page is uh, how, uh, whilst viewing has remained strong, the importance of uh, TV in, in the way we consume any video. So this is looking at the way that the average uh, adult in the UK's consumption of all video content, be that a YouTube instruction viewed on their phone um, or, or, or any sort of clip on, on online, as well as BBC's content and, and so on and so forth. And if you look at, you can see that YouTube is quite prominent. Facebook has a, has, has a sort of fair slice of a shared time, albeit very short clips, other online video content, a bit of cinema and a bit of DVD. And then 68% of all video content in the average person's huge uh, intake of four hours and 42 minutes of video viewing is on a TV screen. And that's interesting, but it doesn't really address the point when it comes to how do you get people to see your video ad because not surprisingly, as the next page shows, advertise, watching video advertising is significantly less popular than watching video per se. It drops from over four hours to 18 minutes of, of video advertising viewing. It's actually gone up last year to near 20 minutes. Um, but you can see there's a big change in people's willingness to, to watch video advertising on certain platforms. You can see that Facebook has disappeared. And I can say that as the biggest, the country's biggest advertiser on well, the big country's biggest advertiser, Sky, know a great deal about what you do and don't get from uh, various advertising platforms. And there isn't that same willingness to be advertised to in social media as there is on others. YouTube diminishes massively. Um, uh, but as you can see here, 93% of all viewing of, of video ads is seen on a TV screen. And I think that's a really important point was everyone sort of scrabbles for attention in the digital space where... Um, of that attention is concise and limited and highly competitive. There's a much bigger, better opportunity to deliver video advertising to uh, an audience that's far more willing to um, engage with it. So that's the sort of backdrop uh, to what's exciting about um, te television generally and the acquisition of Sky and, and today's viewing habits. Before we get into AdSmart, I think on the next page, I wanted to just uh, let someone far more competent to public speaking than me, introduce what AdSmart is all about. And for those of you who have never watched Sky Sports News, uh, this is Jim White, who's been doing this for over 20 years. Some exciting news just in for advertisers. AdSmart from Sky has now signed over 1,000 local and growing businesses just like yours to advertise in world-class content. And now you can join the club. More and more brands are making the big transfer into addressable TV through AdSmart. Businesses of all shapes and sizes are benefiting from the unrivaled advertising impact of TV, speaking just to the homes that matter to them. And it's for a lot less than you might think. Premier League impact for lower league budgets. 
Nothing lands a new idea with more power and impact than TV. So, if you could advertise only to the people that matter to your business and only pay when those ads are seen, well, that would be a good result, wouldn't it? Whether that idea is to get people to buy your product, visit your store, or begin a journey of discovery before buying online, TV has an unassailable ability to drive both fame and sales. To start your rise to the top of the table, visit AdSmart from sky.co.uk. So let me just explain what AdSmart is. It's based on four things that Sky is uniquely placed to offer, and that's uh, scale, uh, content, some amazing technology, and tons and tons of data. So if we just take the scale piece to start with on the next page, you can see that we are um, transitioning from what was, or we've transitioned recently from 27% of uh, all homes that we can reach through the Sky platform by adding the Virgin Media platform, which is, pushes us over for, to over 40% of all UK mm -hmm. households. And we're in the process of adding some others as well. So Now TV, which is uh, wholly owned by Sky, uh, working with various smart TV manufacturers and the UView platform that should see by the end of next year um, the combined reach of the addressable TV platform that is AdSmart in over 60% of all UK households. So that's exciting. This is a summary of, of, of really how best to sort of describe what AdSmart is. And it really is the best of both worlds, the best of TV in terms of delivering big audiences in amazing quality and brand safe content with an established third party measurement system, but combining it with all the great things that we know digital delivers, a real granularity of targeting, real accuracy around customer response tracking. And AdSmart occupies uniquely uh, that, um, that sort of middle ground. I say uniquely because there are other, uh, there are other sort of video um, addressable platforms that are either addressable but not on TV or on TV but not particularly addressable. So if anyone's watched any, any content on ITV Hub on a TV screen and you might remember the registration process, there's really no validation of you are who you are and you are where you are. Um, they're just taking it on uh, as read that that's accurate information, which isn't necessarily, whereas we have a, a sort of legal contract with our subscribers where their address is fairly fundamental to that. In terms of the journey we're on, we're, we, the platform has over 3,000 advertiser customers. Um, about 1,800 of those are new to TV uh, SMEs and plenty more new to TV brands that, that are a little bigger. Uh, the majority of the biggest advertisers in the country use it to supplement their conventional advertising campaigns. And the repeat business is pretty good. And I think those two figures, that 75% and the 70%, are the answers that anyone needs to the question that a lot of uh, organizations, which I'm going to guess you are in the same position as you, which is, well, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could just advertise to the households that matter? And wouldn't it be great if I only paid for those households if I absolutely knew that I'd seen my ad and, and AdSmart's a big yes to both of those questions. And that's what's driving uh, those fairly stunning numbers. These are just some of the ads that uh, we've had the pleasure of working with in East of England, all of which have been made by the magnificent JMS. And there's plenty of local uh, regional brands that have gone before you in, in taking steps down this road that um, we hope you might choose to follow. And I would particularly encourage you to seek out the Gasway testimonial on our website because the commentary that David Metcalf, who's the marketing manager there, says is one of the most you know, compelling endorsements of our platform that we've seen. And um, he said it entirely of, freely of his own opinion rather than anything we, are, we scripted for him. It's, it's well worth a look. Gasway are the largest heating company in East Anglia. Um, they've been established since 1982. Uh, any side of your home heating they can help you with from gas boiler installations, services, repairs and cover plants. The new customers Gasway are looking for really is anyone who owns a home. Anyone who wakes up in the morning and needs hot water or goes to bed needing heating. One thing we're looking for specifically is that those people are homeowners. AdSmart is perfect for that as it can single out a much more sniped approach and so that we only put our uh, advert in front of those demographics. We'd always assumed that TV advertising was way out of our budget and really never investigated. 
So Gasway decided to use AdSmart as part of its marketing strategy, really from the first conversations from Andy from, from AdSmart. And at that point, we realized that it was actually something that we could afford to do. We realized that JMS were the company that we wanted to work with to produce our advert and take our brand to the next level. The commercial that we had made was all focusing around what would happen if you didn't have a boiler. And believe it or not, they're not the easiest thing to publicise and sell. People often just lock them away in the cupboards and completely forget about them. But the message we wanted to get across is, if you didn't have one, what would happen? So we had a young man who, when his boiler goes, when he has that realisation that it's no longer there, suddenly everything goes cold. And then the gasway van comes in, fixes it all. Contact Gasway. Oh. Call Gasway, East Anglia's largest heating company. Gasway, where warmth matters. It worked incredibly well. We had record sales for that month, and essentially that's what every marketeer wants to see. But the level, the increase in sales, wasn't what anyone could be expected. We, we had over 35% growth. Every single metric that we can think of, every single, every single KPI that we have, were at record levels for that month. And as a result of that, we've gone from one month of AdSmart, uh, last financial year, to having it 10 months of this financial year. AdSmart has a fantastic flexibility built in that means we can target specific postcodes. If one of the departments says we need more business in this area as our engineers need more work, what we're able to do with AdSmart is say we need uh, more coverage in this area, these postcodes, and that can happen. If you are a business like Gasway who initially believe that TV advertising is beyond your reach, get that myth dispelled straight away. It is affordable um, and it is targeted uh, and it is probably the single most effective use of our marketing budget that we've had uh, since the company began. So this is an attempt to just try and explain how it works, and it is relatively simple. Uh, each box operates independently and intelligently. So we send uh, content to the box for it to present on, on your screen in whichever way you wish, and we also send ad copy to the box, and they're stored in a, uh, a memory cache that doesn't impact on anybody's ability to store and, and, and uh, download broadcast content. Mm -hmm. And it also stores lots of data about that particular household. So. Um, for example, if, if your household is of a, a particular Experian type, that data is held on the, in the box. Nothing personal, nothing about you, but all about your address. We send the relevant, actually we send the relevant ads out to all boxes, but they're only retained by the ones that have the targeting criteria that matter. So if you only want to talk to people in the, in the Norwich postcode, it'll, it'll be rescinded by every single box in the country that's outside of the Norwich postcode and then all sorts of other targeting filters over the top. And then as we get to a commercial break in any content that, that uh, in this imaginary household uh, is watching on over 130 channels, as we go into a commercial break, um, there's a, if there's a matching time length, um, uh, the prioritization engine in the box will say, right, play the Gasway commercial now, and it'll perfectly superimpose that ad and serve it, dynamically inserting it into the ad break um, in a way that's seamless. So the viewer has no idea that their neighbor, who may not be a homeowner, for example, if that was one of the targeting criteria, might see a different ad in the, if they happen to be watching the same break, uh, watching the, the same break at the same time. Um, and uh, the ad is served seamlessly, full screen, uh, and um, as long as it's watched and will come back to the viewability thresholds, it can be registered as, as, as an impression. These are the channels, so well over 130 different channels in total, this is just some of them. Obviously, as you'd expect, all of the Sky wholly owned channels, uh, but plenty of others. So all of Viacom's channels, which include Channel 5 and MTV, or all of National Geographic's channels, Discovery, so on and so forth, all of whom have made the capital investment to be part of the addressable family. So it doesn't matter what anybody watches um, amongst that mix. They may only watch you know, one channel for a, for a, for a you know, few minutes a day. Uh, they may watch a whole range of channels, but whatever they watch, uh, they will see your ad if that's the outcome that we are uh, aiming for. 
Um, I think we've got a, a, a showreel now that says the, the, the sort of content that that means your ad will appear in. And I think before you play this, Tom, the important point is to say, you know, we all watch TV differently, trying to anticipate how people might might watch content and guess where they might where your ad needs to appear in a schedule is increasingly difficult in the multi-channel multimedia world. But this takes all of that headache away from you. It'll serve your ad in whatever content matters to your customer. Imperial Atlantic Flight 407. In the event of an emergency, stay calm. Imperial Atlantic cannot be held responsible should a passenger be, oh, I don't know, brutally murdered in their hotel room at their final destination. 911, what's your emergency? Dad, I hit somebody. And I left it there. The boy you hit this morning is Jimmy Baxter's son, the head of the most vicious crime family in the city. Whoever you are, you will be found. Oh my God. What are we just up that for? We're doing a little challenge. Wow. Do you reckon it's better for me to smile or not smile? <laughs> All the women have the same faces in old photos. This isn't a photo. <laughs> I like eating balls with a big stick. You are not very good at your jobs, and I'm not very good at teaching you. I love Leah, but we can't be together. The world isn't going to be the same again. I want this to be over. You need to grow up and accept some responsibility. I'm trying to decide if you're the kind of person who likes to know or the kind of person who doesn't. You gonna tell me? We got an anonymous tip about your sister's death. Don't regret the past. Let it out. Peanut Turner! I was really apprehensive about giving the story away. Who is the shadow of Ike Turner? A coming of age at 40 years old. I got my freedom. We don't need tech to enjoy ourselves. There's plenty of fun stuff we can do without tech. I won't swipe. If I wanted swipe. They are the daughters of the Nazi High Command. I have a list of Nazi conspirators, English traitors. My girls are not the enemy. I have to stop this. There's a player in the battle space. He's armed and skilled. Tommy's putting innocent lives in danger. Get him out. Stay on this train, you will die. I am not leaving. Ladies, I have a plan. Von Roth will transform a child into a mouse. And he will exterminate those brats. Mice. Whatever. Great stuff. Thanks, Tom. And I should also point out that we show a fair amount of sport on Sky, and you'll appear in that too if it's a schedule break. Um, so thanks. That's good stuff. That's how we deliver it. In terms of the, the fun bit from a marketing challenge is the fact that we've got this incredibly deep understanding of every single household um, based on the fact that they are a subscribing customer to us. So we've got lots of first-party data, which I think appears when you click it now. Um, and then lots of third-party data, uh, which we've mapped and matched to our complete customer base. So, for example, just picking one of those, Experian have 11 billion bits of information about the UK population, and that works out to about 450 data points for every single household. And it's that that we can tap into to help you uh, identify who matters and, more importantly, exclude those that don't, and lots of other data sets, as you can see there, that we can play with. And we group those targeting options into, uh, I think there's about 1,200 different targeting options, and they fall into 10 fairly broad targeting categories. Experian is actually only 66 of those 1,200. There's 66 Experian mosaic types and um, 15 groups, but lots and lots of other data around finance and tech adoption and car ownership and, and so on and so forth. Uh, once you've got your demographic sorted, it's then a case of zeroing in on uh, geography that matters to your business. Now, that might be you haven't got any, you want to just be really niche about who you pick off on a national basis, but you might want to restrict it to macro regions, or as is most of the way most of our clients approach this, um, organizing their marketing in the same way as you organize your business, which is very often around postcodes or cities or local authorities. And if none of that works, then we can produce some bespoke geography that um, can, can create a radius around a, a shop or a distribution point or in a, in a particular sort of catchment area. The point I made earlier about viewability, uh, there is no risk of, this is not sort of skip ad now after three seconds and oops, you've had to pay for that whole thing. No one uh, is at risk of paying for an impression unless at least three quarters of the ad has been seen. Most of the, most of the ads we run are 30 seconds. So that means you've got to get to second 23 before there's any chance of being charged. And I say chance of being charged because 
if there's no interactivity with the box uh, before or after the ad via the remote control, and it varies, the window with, of interactivity varies on which channel you're on, um, then we'll presume that nobody's there and we won't charge you for it. So there's a real very, very high uh, threshold of what is and is not a view uh, in the world of addressable TV, as far as we're concerned. We have an enormous panel that measures what goes on. So whilst there's 10 million households, we're, we're capturing an each box within those 10 million operates the way we've described we capture data from from uh half a million of those so so one in 20 um which is uh a hundred times bigger panel than the panel that measures linear broadcast for itv channel 4 and sky and then you get lots of clever reports that you'd expect and we're, we're trying to uh meet the, the, the benchmark that is rightly been set by google and facebook who report brilliantly albeit um you never quite know who you're reaching um uh, with daily um, and aggregate impression reports and summaries of where the campaign's going out. So in, in conclusion, um, the way to look at this is like any other digital uh, campaign that just happens to be delivered via the most powerful medium on the planet and that you will execute it, deliver it and report on it in, in order to refine the whole process as efficiently as we can so that each time you, you go to where you're finessing um, who the right audience is and perhaps expanding the, the region within which you operate. So final page is to say, look, this is uh, the, the power of TV enhance, all the great things about TV advertising, but with none of the wastage that you might have presumed might apply. So thanks for your time. If anybody's, I don't know when we're doing questions, Francesca, if anyone- um, After got, Tom's hmm? presentation in a okay. minute. So Tom's gonna talk about commercial production now, but that is a great reminder, David, thank you. Um, uh, that if you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we'll answer them at the end of Tom's presentation. Thanks ever so much, David. Great, over to you, Tom. Thanks, David. Well, I've seen you do the um, presentation about AdSmart to several audiences down the years. And uh, every year it just keeps getting more impressive and more granular and you can target even smaller audiences um so yeah it's fascinating to see it every time you do it um anyway i'm the senior editor so i make quite a few of the commercials but of course we've got a larger uh, production team who take care of it making uh, sometimes a couple of hundred commercials a year uh so uh, you do actually need an ad to show on adsmart which is where we come in it's quite a common misconception that TV commercials um, can be quite expensive, but that isn't necessarily the case. You need a commercial that achieves your objectives. That isn't always the most expensive option. Uh, in fact, uh, live action commercials can begin from only £5,000. Motion graphics can begin around £3,000. And some of the largest brands that advertise on TV do make commercials that are uh, wholly made with motion graphics. And that's an area where we quite often specialise. So how do we begin with an ad? Well, uh, we start with a creative brief. And we work around this ethos um, created by David Ogilvy, who started one of the world's largest advertising agencies. And he said, when I write an advertisement, I don't want you to tell me that you find it creative. I want you to find it so interesting that you buy the product. And that's exactly our starting point for any campaign that we would produce for you. So how do we begin taking a creative brief? Well, if we were Don Draper, we'd probably pour ourselves a drink. Uh, and have a bit of a crisis, but we don't. Uh, we'll take a thorough brief from you, understand your brand, your campaign objectives. Uh, then we'll start developing concepts that meet that brief. And like all good DRTV and highly targeted campaigns, the main thing that we want to do is to make sure that the ad drives a call to action, whether that's visiting your website, picking up the phone, uh, footfall to a physical location. Uh, once you're happy with that, you give us the go ahead to move on to production. But before anything gets produced, we have to submit the script um, to a body called Clearcast. And if you have never heard of those, Clearcast are the people who insist on the little tiny bits of text along the bottom of a commercial. Um, but they are there for a very good reason. Uh, that is, um, every advertiser has to go through Clearcast, so you never actually uh, soloed out. Um, but you might need to provide substantiation to verify any claims that you're making in your commercial. And that's why the little supers along the bottom have to be there. But the important thing about Clearcast is um, 
it maintains the viewer's trust in TV ads. Um, and that is what makes TV so valuable is that uh, all of the adverts have to clear certain hurdles to get on air. And whilst it may sound like a complicated process, we take care of the whole thing. So you don't have to worry about it. We can then move on to production. And uh, this still image is a frame that I took uh, on a ship for tax assist. Um, they are one of the regular advertisers that we produce commercials for that go on AdSmart. All of our production and uh, all the planning um, and all of the deliveries are all taken care of in-house by our own team and they're all tailored uh, to the needs of your campaign. Um, we don't sort of spend money on uh, various elaborate things that aren't necessary. It's all tailored specifically to achieving the goals of the campaign. And we've got one of the leading sound studios in the region, so our sound is great. We have the best voice talent available. And we always make sure that we gain um, additional uh, ways that we can repurpose your commercial for use on social media. Um, anything that you film, all the graphics, all the assets can all be used for other purposes as well. So uh, you can have ads, AdSmart as the main linchpin of your campaign. And we can also make use of all of the pieces that we've shot and produced elsewhere as well. So how do we actually deliver the commercial? Back when we started making commercials, it was uh, recorded onto a tape, put in a jiffy bag and actually posted out to each of the channels. But of course, it's far more high tech these days. Once we've got a final approval from you, uh, Clearcast will take a look at the ad, um, make sure that it's OK, meets all of the requirements and then they'll sign that off. Uh, we'll then upload the commercial to a uh, media logistics company. Um, they then uh, do some quality con control checks on the ad to make sure it meets all the technical specifications. Uh, once that's approved and checked, it then gets transferred to Sky and they do their magic and put it into the viewers' boxes. So that's how we make an ad. That's how we deliver an ad. That's how AdSmart works. Do we have any questions? We do, we do. Um, I've got three or four questions. I'll, uh, we're going to answer the first one uh, live. So um, I'll, would we get details about minimum spends and the kind of results we could expect? I don't know if, David, you're, you're well placed for that. I'm assuming it's on the, uh, the airtime side of things. Yeah, I, 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 forgive me, I, I meant to mention that and failed to, fairly fundamental point. Um, yeah, look, I, the, the beauty of this is it's designed to be a, a relevant media option for uh, advertisers used to spending on, on um, local press, radio, PPC, social, etc. cetera, not uh, used to spending on sort of fairly large regional um, linear TV campaigns. So the minimum campaign cost is £3,000. Uh, what you get for that, um, depends. Essentially, it's a binary thing. The more the more you spend, the more households you're going to reach. The relative cost of those households is going to be shaped by how elusive and um, difficult to reach they might be. So, you know, a high net worth audience, not surprisingly, is a bit more expensive than buyers of an FMCG product. Um, but to put, give you some context, so if in let's say in the NR postcode we've got a hundred thousand uh, Sky and Virgin households, which I think we roughly have. And let's say that your particular product or service was irrelevant to 80% of those homes. We're just going to target 20,000 homes in the NR postcode. We'll send that ad to all those 20,000 homes. It'll sit in the box doing nothing with an instruction to play no more than once a day and to stop playing once it's been served five times, let's say, for the sake of easy maths. So if we're going to serve uh, one ad five times in 20,000 homes, that's going to deliver 100,000 impressions. And at let's say 50 pounds per thousand, that's 5,000 quid for your campaign. That's a household cost where we're guaranteeing to deliver that ad in every single home. And if we don't, you don't pay for that, that, that impression. Excellent. Thank you, David. Um, why should I choose AdSmart over another addressable platform like VOD? What's the difference really? Um, Look, there's some brilliant VOD content and, you know, we're all probably watching a lot more VOD than we were, although I go back to the earlier point about VOD, broadcast of VOD only being about 15 minutes a day on average of content. Um, obviously, Netflix and, and Amazon is brilliant stuff, but you can't advertise in it, so that's not very relevant. Um, they've got a slightly bigger average view at about 20 minutes a day, but it's still relatively small versus 
live uh, or recorded content in which AdSmart works. The big point of difference is the addressability piece. You know, the, the ITV Channel 4 have some great data sets that you can target, but they're matching that back to the information they've captured about their customers. And none of that um, is, is um, particularly detailed. Um, there's, there's no granularity on address. There's the only requisition is to is to put in your postcode. So even if you put it in accurately, it's not singling it down to a house. It's just a part of a street or a cul-de-sac or whatever it might be. So it could be any number of homes in that mix. Um, uh, but essentially, they, do, they don't have any ability to uh, deliver addressability on TV. So, so addressability for Channel 4's um, VOD services and ITV's VOD services is exclusively um, uh, on devices. So whilst that's great, it's a very different audience. Um, it tends to be much younger um, uh, rather than the sort of more homeowning adult audience that we excel at. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Dave. There's possibly a question for Tom. Do we make many commercials at the lower end of the scale? Is, is that still something that you would say is a good, you know, or should you spend more money on, on the production side of it for a test campaign, perhaps? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it really depends whether you're talking about a, a product-led commercial or brand-led commercial. Quite often it's worth spending more when you're pushing a new brand, um, reviving a brand you want to sort of uh, change people's impressions of uh, how you think about a business um and that can sometimes require a bigger brand image and that can sometimes mean spending more shooting glossier footage getting celebrities and endorsements and that kind of thing uh if you're a brand that's already fairly well known or you're targeting a niche that have already previously bought from you then yeah you can save quite a lot of money by producing a graphics led ad with product images um and and literally just focus on getting direct sales of that particular product so it's um producing an ad that's suitable for the the goals of the campaign really it's not all about spending large amounts of cash Okay, brilliant. Thank you. I think that's all the main questions that have come through in the q and I'll, I'll give uh, somebody a, a few seconds. If anyone also would, has a more complicated question that they'd like to actually ask on mic, then you can press the raise hand button now and we can unmute you. I think other than that, uh, we've probably got, had all the questions that we're going to have. I'd just like to say thank you very much to um, David and Tom for speaking and for Andy for joining us today to talk all about AdSmart. Um, we'll be following up with all the attendees um, uh, just to see what your thoughts are on uh, the webinar and obviously your thoughts on Sky. Um, but obviously in the meantime, hopefully you've got our contact information. So do get in touch. We'd be very excited to talk to you more about the platform and, and commercial production. Um, but I haven't got any more questions coming through. So I think we'll uh, end the webinar there then. Thank you, everybody. Tom, thanks, you everybody. Nice, uh, nice, nice, thanks for attending. And thanks, Francesca and Tom, for a, for a great event. Wonderful.